today really quick, you know, because Generation Bonds is coming up. And tomorrow I'm gonna pick up Matt Greer from the airport, and JP will be coming. And on Friday, all the other cool guys will be here. But when you guys see the video, Sunday, Generation Bonds event, first weekend will be over. And we're probably all chilling right now. Talking about an amazing show. It was amazing. Some cool memories that were made that we will share with you in future videos. So be on the lookout for that. But don't worry if you haven't been here yet. Because there will still be a cool program in the next few days. We still have the demos of Bjorn, Yannick Keegan, JP and my boy Maria. So make sure you come, give them your support, and you will not be disappointed. Okay, let's go. Today we are going to discuss the necessity to process your bonsai soil and sift it. We will however not discuss the different types of soil and the mixes, because there are already enough other resources for that. When I first heard that bonsai soil needs to be sifted, I thought, what the f it won't kill the tree if i don't sift my soil and i can just wash out the dust by being more thorough in the final watering so what's the big deal then i learned that you put different layers of soil in your bonsai pot starting with rough and big sifted materials on top of that a layer of medium sized grain and on top of that another layer of even finer grain size and so on and so on finally the finest top layer and then even top dressing. I really couldn't make sense of that. Is the benefit to our trees really high enough to justify going through all of this trouble? While it may not be super important in a big plastic container for a fresh Yamadori, it becomes more and more essential for those developed trees that we keep in the nicer and shallow pots. To understand that, let's get to the drawing board. Okay, so here's what we do and how it affects the tree. First, a layer of rough stuff, then medium, and then finer stuff all the way to the top. The biggest difference for the tree in the ground with a widespread root system versus the tree in a pot with a compacted root ball is the level of humidity. While we have rather even humidity in the earth, the humidity in our bonsai pots shifts naturally due to the size of the pot but also due to sun, wind and gravity. The soil surface tends to be much drier and the bottom of the pot much wetter. This of course affects root growth especially in those pots that are very shallow. And here is where all the effort of sifting and sorting your soil comes in to counteract exactly that effect. The effect is called capillary elevation which keeps more water in the areas with finer and denser soil than in the areas with bigger not so dense soil. This keeps the bottom of the pot drier and the upper part a bit more wet. This way the humidity levels within the pots are equalized and the root ball is kept evenly moist even within the confined space of the bonsai pot, which of course results then in an even root growth. With a fine layer of moss on top, our root system in the pot is sealed and the effect perfected. The soil surface will be protected from drying out too fast by the sun and wind and our root system can thrive happily ever after. 